KLR650 fan housing, Ducati 848 fan motor, no mods to the KLR. So I'm going to jump you forward here, I'm on the KLR, and we are going to see if I can get this Ducati fan mocked up on the bike. Now, obviously I went ahead and I, I pulled the seat, side covers, and tank just to make this you know process a little bit faster, but the fans are about the same diameter, <clears throat> and what I want to do is pull the original fan off, and then I'll hook them up to a battery and do a, an amperage draw test and just, you know, just see if the new Ducati fan is a lower amperage, and then my super scientific test of how much it's flowing is going to be to hold my hand back and just see how much it feels like it's blowing on it. So that's one mod I want to do. Uh, I always feel like the fan comes on really late and today it never came on at all because it actually popped the uh, fans fuse on the other side. So I was disconnecting the uh, thermo switch here, or the fan switch and did some checks and then it turned out to be the uh, fuse over there. but. I've never replaced it, so that's the first time it's failed, but mm, I don't know. I'd still like to try to upgrade this system as much as I can. So what I'll probably do, regardless of if I can get the um, the uh, Ducati fan on here, I'm going to wire in an override switch, just uh, basically bypassing this. So I'll put a, a junction in here and make it kind of a bolt-on system. So, so if I need to run that switch, like, or if I need to run the fan, uh, at lower speeds or something like that, I can just flick the switch. It's going to do a, a nice, uh, can create a ground path, and then it'll kick the fan on, and the entire system will operate as factory. You just have to remember to shut it off. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull this fan off, and we'll take some measurements and, and see what it looks like. I'm going to complete the circuit. So, three point. 05, 3.06 amps. And then we're gonna watch it real quick as it as circuit. So 3.4 on the startup, but now we're down to 2.5, 2.52 running. Okay, so I think I have a solution here. Now if you look here, this is the stock KLR housing for the fan. I've removed the motor and uh, we have three mounting screws here and these are uh, like a nut cert, so it's a captured nut, and you thread in from this side to screw the motor and fix it to the housing. The Ducati motor, you actually screw from through the housing and into the motor itself, and that's how it's held up. So they're kind of opposite, but they both have three mounting screws, and they actually get really close as far as alignment. Um, you can line up maybe two, but if I can't screw all three of them in equally, I don't want to use it. So Going further, here's the Ducati fan, KLR housing, fit within each other very, very well, okay? So here's what I want to do. I have found that if I put the Ducati motor in, I can clock it. It's just a temporary view here. So you can see the uh, mounting screw on the KLR housing, just a slight interference with the edge of the motor. Well, it's like that on all three. So I'm thinking if I just clearance just the edge on those three spots, you know, it's going to be centered. And then I can go ahead and uh, screw in from the other side, and that'll clamp it and keep it isolated like that without having to make any serious modifications that we couldn't, you know, come back from in case this doesn't work. So you'd have the motor centered in there, and we'd go ahead and put our fan, our our new Ducati fan in, we could have an upgraded motor in the stock housing as a bolt-on. So this is what I'm going to go for, and we'll see if it works. Worst case scenario, we didn't really modify anything, and we can go back to stock. it is time to duplicate this portion of the harness from the original fan and we're going to duplicate it 
on the Ducati motor, that way this is completely plug and play. So because I cut down a lot of harnesses and save a lot of things, I have a few connectors like this, so pretty common uh, two terminal. And then I have the corresponding blade terminals to go inside that. I have a ring terminal that matches the ground side for that. We'll use some high quality wire, some heat shrink, and we'll make it happen. So another thing I did is I changed the uh, screws for something a little shorter on the motor here. And then put a little blue Loctite so it doesn't go anywhere, but I can still remove it in the future should I not want to keep this. So as of now, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, soldering and we'll get this connection going, get it on the bike. And this, we're going to go ahead and double back within the heat shrink so it replicates the ground path here. There you have it. All right, one more thing we're gonna do before this permanently goes back on the bike. So the gap from the surface of, of, or from this edge to the surface of the radiator, to me could be a little tighter. And I just wanna be sure that it's gonna actually suck air through and not you know, pull it from around here, so. This is just some edge trim. I'm going to use it to close the gap up just a little bit. See if we can make this work. test. All right, that looks like it. That looks like it to me. I'll leave slack in the lower line here. Let's go ahead and get the tank on. Go for a ride. start moving drops back down but the fans on right now it's not going any higher it's about at least 90 degrees outside so seems like it's doing really well but you could definitely feel you could definitely feel this thing moving some moving some air yeah it's it's a lot more steady
definitely seems a lot more steady. So. Okay, now that we have the fan on, I wanna work on the override switch for it. Like I said, to control some of that slow speed cooling. So what I've done, made a simple aluminum bracket, just uh, ties into a set of seven eighths clamps that I had here. Can't really see those, but real basic, two clamp halves just bolted together. Now the switch I'm using, this is just a super generic one from O'Reilly's, it does illuminate. So I'm gonna try to tie power into it uh, whenever it's on so I can visually see, you know, have like some kind of reminder here. And then since I didn't have a waterproof one on the shelf and I don't really feel like ordering anything, I just went ahead and uh, doubled up some heat shrink on this thing. And hopefully that'll at least help it a little bit. There is uh, an adhesive in here, so like a sealant. So that'll at least help on the top side. And then on the bottom, if I can find some heat shrink big enough, I'll try to seal it a little bit more. And we'll see how that goes. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work on getting this thing tied in on the wiring side. All right, continuing with the override switch, I just have a length of uh, black 16 gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and strip the end. All right. Two different lengths of heat shrink here, or two different sizes, inner and outer. And then here's the terminal I'm gonna use for the uh, ground side where the fan switch is. So you can see it has another tab there. So the factory plug to the switch from the harness will just go right here and then this will run up to the new override switch. That is the switch side. I'm just doing a continuity test to show you which terminals I'm doing here. So the front and back in this case. Okay. And all we're doing is supplying a ground path. Middle and front always middle and back I could use those two as well for this instance I'm just gonna go front and back because that's easiest to remember okay. just to make it a little easier on myself here bend of these things. All right, and to tie in our final, our final ground here from the switch, we're gonna go to that wire right there. There's actually two unused uh, terminals or female sockets from the harness, one's a power, one's a ground, so we're gonna obviously tie to the ground with uh, just a factory type butt connector, or male, male connector, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp that on, plug her in. All right, fan installation is done. So fan's in, we have it wired. Here's our override switch, so off. And that's independent of the key. So as long as you remember to turn that thing off, you should be good. 
So this will still operate exactly as normal. You know, it'll operate uh, per the temp factory temp switch or fan switch. And yeah, if you just want to override it, that's all you got to do. Click the switch. That's it. Gotta stay cool.